Let's build this beautiful headcount dashboard. We'll bring in icons to showcase who is on our team and be able to update the number of hires so that our icons will dynamically update as we change our values. And as you'll soon see, this is one of the easiest dashboards to create. And all you need to do is follow these three steps, outlining your data, then making it pretty, and finally, populating our dynamic formulas. And if you stick around till the end, you'll learn a lot of really neat Excel shortcuts that you can use to make your work a lot more efficient. If you're new to this channel, hey, I'm Josh, your CFO guy, and I help people like you grow in your career with Excel, finance, and accounting. You can find hundreds of resources like the one we're covering today on my website, yourcfoguy.com. Go ahead and hit the subscribe button and let's get started with step one, outlining your data. I'm going to start with a blank slate by creating a new workbook and just outlining what my dashboard should look like by the time I'm done. I won't worry about the designs or formulas. That'll come next. So I'm going to flip back to this dashboard and take a snapshot of it using the snipping tool. And then I'll flip back to my file and I'll paste it in as such, where I'll enter my title. Then I'll enter in the headers starting with department, fences, hires. Then let's populate these six departments. And then a total row. Okay, now in row two, I'm gonna start entering numbers on my columns, starting with a one in cell E2 over here. And this is gonna be used later in my formula when I bring in my icons. So in cell F2, I'll go ahead and enter plus one, and I'll just continue that until I get to 10 as such. And for the title, I'm actually gonna put this in cell C1. Now let me just go ahead and populate my expense amounts and higher amounts. And then I'll just use alt and equal in order to get the totals of both of these as such. Perfect, we have our outline complete and man, this does not look pretty. So let's change that. First, I wanted to find what my color scheme is going to be. This is going to be a huge piece in designing a pretty dashboard. So I'll review what my colors are with my brand by hopping over to my website and choosing three or so colors. To get these colors, I'll utilize the color picker tool that's part of Microsoft's Power Toys on my windows over here. If you don't have this, there are tons of free color picker tools that you can use. Okay, let me click on my logo in order to find what this light yellow is. And it looks like it is this hex over here, which I'll record. And I'll just write bright yellow over here and I'll paste that hex code as such. And let's go ahead and make it that actual color by just pasting that hex code here. Okay, my next color is this dark yellow. I'll just come in, grab this hex code over here, flip back to my Excel file and let's just write dark yellow and paste that as such. And now let's go for one more color on my website. I'm gonna wanna take this dark blue over here, or maybe the dark blue shown over here. So again, I'll go ahead and utilize the color picker as such, and I'll copy this, and I'll write dark blue over here. All right, and let's actually set these colors. Great, now that we have our color scheme, let's now get rid of these grid lines by hitting Alt, W, V, and then G. I'm also gonna zoom in. You can also click on View and then just uncheck grid lines over here. Now, I wanna better define the boundaries of my dashboard. So I'm going to select all of my cells by hitting Control A, then change the background color by hitting Alt H and then H. You could also just hit this button right over here. All right, let's start with a gray background as such. Then I'll select the cells that are part of my dashboard, A1 to O10 over here, and I'll change that to a white by hitting Alt H H. And I'll go ahead and hit enter. Okay, now let's change the row height starting with where their departments are shown in rows four through nine. So I'll select this over here. I'll then hit Alt, H, O, and then H again for height. Again, you can click on format on the home ribbon and then click on H or row for height as such. All right, we're gonna set this to 68.5. Okay, already starting to look a little bit better. Let's go ahead and auto fit this as such. And now let's align all of this here to center. You can do that by hitting Alt H A and then M, or you could also click this button right here. Okay, now let's make my dashboard have the font family of Roboto. We'll go ahead and make this over here a font size of 14. And let's again auto fit that. And now let's also bold all of this. Great, now let's make the background of our department header our dark blue. So I'll select this cell, I'll hit Alt H H, and then again, I'll go to our dark blue over here. I'll go ahead and select that. And then I'm gonna choose the color of the actual text to be white, which I can get to by hitting Alt H F C, clicking this button right here. I'm gonna then use my arrow keys to get to white and I'll hit enter. Now let's copy this formatting over to the rest of this row by pressing Control C, holding down Shift and right arrow key, and then hitting Alt H V and then R 
R over here, which is going to paste just the formatting. This is a shortcut I use all the time, but if it's easier, you could just use your mouse. Okay. All right. Now let's extend this column so that I could see the word expenses. And I'll get there by hitting Alt H for the home ribbon, O for format, and then I to auto fit column width. Perfect. Now let's exchange these expense values by formatting for accounting. So I'll select this value. I'll hold down Control and Shift. I'll then select down and then I'll hit Alt H A N. You could also get there by clicking on the drop down and selecting accounting as such. Okay, now let's round down two decimal places by hitting Alt H9 and then again Alt H9. You also could have just hit this button right here. Great. For hires, we actually want to align that by center. So I'll select this range again by hitting Control Shift and down. And then I'll hit Alt H A C or this button right over here for aligning center. Excellent. Now let's just reformat row three to be a little bit taller. I'll select Shift and Space and then I could hit again Alt Alt H O H in order to change the height. I'll select 30 for that. And let's also align it middle Alt H A M as such. Great. Now let's add a gray border to all of our cells. And the way that we'll do that is by selecting our entire range over here and then hitting Alt H B in order to open up the border. And then I'll click on I for the line color. I'm gonna go ahead and select this one over here. And then I'll hit Alt H B A in order to set a border across. Okay, this is coming together. Oops, and it looks like I overwrote the colors on my color scheme. So just to bring that back, I'll go ahead and select these cells and change the colors as such. Okay, we're almost there. Let's make our header pretty by first selecting our first row by hitting shift and then space and then extending the row height again by hitting Alt H O H. This time we're gonna set it to 71. And we'll go ahead and align this middle, Alt H A M. And then we'll also change the size to 24 by hitting Alt H and then F S. And I could just enter in 24 here. Let's also make this Roboto. So by hitting Alt H F F and typing in Roboto. Perfect. Now let's select this entire row by holding down the shift key and hitting Alt H H and going to our light yellow over here. Now let's go ahead and bold this. Great. Now let's just come over here and actually change these colors to our dark blue. It'll be subtle, but it'll be useful with our ultimate color design as such. Okay, now let's just narrow the size of our first and last column so that it acts as more of a buffer. So I'll select the entire column by hitting Control and then Space, and then I'll hit Alt H O and then W for column width over here. Let's just change it to 2.5. Perfect, now I'll select this column, I'll just copy it, I'll come to column O, I'll select that column and then paste it. You'll notice that the formatting as well as the column width has pasted as well. Okay, now let me just copy my logo and my website as such. So I'll navigate back to this dashboard just to grab my logo here and I'll hold down control, I'll press control C, then I'll come back here and let's go ahead and paste it. And let's just bring this over here and let's also change this color to our dark blue as such. Okay, our design is complete. Now it's time to get these beautiful icons in place and update them dynamically with our formula. To do that, we'll be bringing in an icon from Excel under the insert ribbon over here. Excel has tons of different icons, images, and all sorts of illustrations just waiting for you to bring directly into your Excel file. I'm going to click on icons and then I'll click on people and I'm gonna use this icon right over here. I'll go ahead and hit insert and I'll just bring this to the right as such. Now, I want this icon to also be aligned with my color scheme. So I'll click on the icon and notice what happens when I do. This tab on the ribbon appears called graphics format. So if I click it, I could then control my graphics fill. I'm gonna choose my dark yellow as such and then I'll copy it and to the right of it, I'll again hit graphics format and change this graphics fill to a very subtle gray. This will be used for my non-shaded in headcount. Okay, now here's the key. To pull in these values over here, I need to be able to reference this cell. And in order to reference the cell, I need to place these icons inside it. Well, Excel has a really neat tool that allows you to place an icon or picture directly inside a cell. You can do that by either clicking this button over here that appears whenever you click an icon, or you can press Control C, right click, 
and then click this button over here for paste picture in cell. Okay, now they're both in the cell. Notice how both of these icons are slightly different in size? Well, that's because the size of the icon extends as the column width extends. So let's just make sure that we get this absolutely correct. I'll select this entire column and I'll hit Alt H O W to get the width. And as you can see, it's 11.57. So I'll select this column by hitting Alt H O W again, and let's click 11.57 as such. Perfect. Now look how neat this is. I can go to the first column in my dashboard, point to this cell over here and have the information carry over. I can go one cell to the right and point to this cell and the information again will carry over. So now all we need to do is set up a dynamic formula to pull in the icon based off of the number of hires I have over here. To make this formula easy to manage, I'll make both of these a named range. So I'll select my first icon and I'll hit Alt M M or I'll click over here for define name. All right, I'm gonna call this headcount underscore shaded and let's make the scope for just sheet one over here. And you know what, while we're at it, why don't we change this to headcount dashboard? Perfect, I'll do the same thing for this other one and I'll call this headcount underscore unshaded. Now again, I'm gonna set the scope to only be this tab over here because I don't wanna risk me potentially having another dashboard that'll interfere with these names ranges as such. I'll go ahead and hit okay. Let's also just add a little bit of a padding over here so that we can see where the dashboard cuts off. Okay, now it's time to wrap this up with our final formula. And all I need is a really simple if function. So I'll type in equals if, and then I'll point to the row over here and I'll hit F4 twice in order to lock the row and say if it's less than or equal to the value in our column over here, which again, I'll hit F4 this time three times in order to lock. If it's less than or equal to it, I'll wanna pull in the value from my headcount shaded. I can just start typing in headcount and the value populates here when I then hit tab. Otherwise, I'll again type in headcount for our other named range. I'll hit the down arrow and hit tab again. I'll then close the parentheses and hit enter. Looks like it's working. Let's go ahead and copy this across all of our cells. There you go. Looks like the information populated. I can go ahead and now change this to any number that I want and my values will automatically update. How neat. Okay, so my last step is just to group this row over here since I don't need that for my picture. I'll hit Alt A G as such. And let's go ahead and collapse this, make this bold while we're at it. Okay, great. Now the last step is to just take a snapshot of this so I could put it in a slide deck or in an email to my boss or investors. So I'll select all of this range here. I'll press Control C, then I'll hit Alt H V and then U. This right over here to paste as a picture. Great, now I have this over here. I can just cut it, put it in a pitch deck or an email, and I'm all set. Woo, man, that was a lot that we covered. We went over design principles, how to add dynamic icons and pictures, and learned a ton of Excel shortcuts along the way. But this is just one of the many dashboards that your business needs. This one over here is a great KPI dashboard that will summarize the key areas to analyze each month in your business. So just go right ahead and click that button to watch it, and I'll catch you in the next video.